So up till now, we've talked about simple harmonic oscillators. But we need to discuss now what happens when an oscillator has an external force that acts on it that opposes the motion of the oscillator and causes energy to be lost from the system. So this typical force that we use in this case is one that is proportional to the velocity but directly opposite to the direction of the velocity and this results in something called damped harmonic motion. And as you can see here, we can model this by adding a large cardboard disk to our simple mass spring system, and that greatly increases the air resistance. And if you look carefully over time, you can see that the amplitude of this system is decreasing. So to understand the details and the mathematical uh, formulae that govern this type of system, let's look at it on the computer and apply Newton's second law to it. So here we have the same system we've had before. We've got a mass M attached to the end of a spring, but now we have this new uh, damping force that is proportional to the velocity and opposite to it, so it will slow the system down, or as we say for oscillators, it will damp the system. So to find the position of the mass as a function of time, we start with Newton's second law, just as we did before, and we're going to define the direction to the right as the positive direction. Now, if we look at the forces, both of the forces are acting to the left, so both of these forces are going to be negative. So we start with uh, F equals MA, that's Newton's second law, and the total force acting on the object is going to be minus K times X, that's the force due to the spring. We have minus B times X dot, that's our new damping force, and this is equal to M times x uh, double dot, where this is our acceleration written in the dot notation. So if we rearrange this, we're going to have x double dot plus b over m times x dot plus k over m times x, and this is going to be equal to zero. And this is the differential equation that we're trying to solve. So to solve this, we're first going to introduce two new quantities. And the first of these is omega naught, and this is going to be equal to the square root of k over m, and we call this the natural uh, frequency of the system. And this is the frequency that the undamped system would oscillate at. Now the other quantity we're going to introduce is written here with the Greek letter as zeta, and this is going to be equal to, for this system here, it's going to be equal to b over 2 times the square root of m times k. Or if we write it in terms of omega naught, we can say it's b over 2 times m times omega naught. And this is called the damping ratio. And it'll be different for different systems, but it's defined uh, this way for our mass spring system. Now, what we're now going to do is we're going to take these quantities here and we're going to put them into our differential equation and use it to rewrite it. And when we do that, what we're going to have is we're going to have a x double dot, that hasn't changed. Now, b over m has changed, and what we're going to get here is we're going to get 2 times zeta times omega naught times x dot, and plus, and of course k over m is just omega naught squared times x, and this is equal to zero. So this is a slightly different way of writing our differential equation, um, but we've written it now in terms of omega naught and zeta. So the next step is solving it. So here's our differential equation, and now we have this additional x dot term in. And that makes things a little trickier, because we can't just guess cosine, because when we differentiate cosine, we're going to get sine here, and we're going to have a cosine here again, and so we can't just guess a simple trig function. So we're going to have to go back. We want a function that when we differentiate it, we get the same function. So we're going to have to go back to our initial guess that we started with right at the beginning uh, when we were dealing with the simple harmonic oscillator. We're going to go with an exponential. And so let's try a e to the qt. Now, when we differentiate that with respect to time, we're going to get q times a e to the qt. And of course, when we differentiate it a second time, 
we're going to get uh, q squared a e to the q t. So what we're going to do now is put all of these into our differential equation and we're going to solve, we want to find out what q is. So we've got x double dots, that's q squared a e to the q t. Uh, and then we're going to have 2 times zeta omega naught and then q a e to the q t. Um, and that's our second term. And then plus omega naught squared a e to the q t. And this is equal to 0. So the first thing we can do is we can divide through by a e to the q t and get rid of all of these terms. And then we have a nice simple quadratic expression for uh, q, q squared plus 2. And then we have here zeta omega naught times q plus omega naught squared is equal to 0. So to solve for q now, all we have to use is our quadratic uh, um, formula. So q here is going to be equal to, well, it's minus, um, it's, sorry, it's uh, minus b, so that's minus 2 zeta omega naught, and then plus or minus the square root of, and then it's b squared, so that's 4 zeta squared omega naught squared minus um, 4ac, so that's 4 times uh, a is 1 here, and c is omega naught, so that's minus 4 omega naught squared. And then this is all divided by uh, 2a, so it's all over 2. So we can simplify this a little bit here. So this first term here is just going to be minus and then zeta times omega naught. And here we're going to have plus or minus. Well, if we take the 2 inside the square root, then we have to square it. So the 4 is going to disappear. So the 4s are going to cancel out. And we're going to have omega naught squared. We can take factor out an omega naught squared. So we take it outside the square root, and it loses the square. So that's omega naught times the square root. And then what we're left with here is zeta squared minus 1. So this gives us the two values for q. We're going to have uh, a positive value where we've got the plus sign here, and we're going to have the uh, q minus where we've got the minus sign here. So here's our solution with the allowed values for q. And so this gives a total solution, um, which is equal to a e to the q plus t plus b e to the q minus t, where q plus minus is just equal to you know uh, omega naught zeta, and then plus or minus, depending on whether you've got q plus or q minus, times omega naught uh, square root of zeta squared minus 1. And so these things here, a and b, are two constants. And so this uh, appears to be, we, we appear to have solved the um, equation of motion. We've got an expression for the position of the mass as a function of time t. However, things are perhaps not quite as simple as they seem here. So what the maths is telling us is that we're going to end up with two values for these uh, exponential coefficients in our solution. But there's going to be three classes of motion. If we look at the square root at the end, we can see that we've got the square root of the damping ratio squared minus 1. So if the damping ratio is greater than 1, that will be the square root of a positive number. And we'll end up with two negative uh, exponential coefficients. And that will give us a class of motion that we call overdamping. In the second case, when the damping ratio is less than 1, we're going to end up with the square root of a negative number. And what that is going to introduce is an imaginary number. And as we've seen before, we're going to get, we saw that very briefly when we were deriving the simple harmonic oscillator, we're going to end up with an imaginary exponential. And that will give us a different class of solution that is called underdamping. 
And the final type of solution is the one where the damping ratio is exactly equal to one. And then in that case, the square root is zero. And instead of two solutions, we end up with one. And that's a problem because we've integrated our differential twice. And so we have to have two constants of integration. And what that tells us is that because we've only got one now, we've missed a solution somewhere for that special case where the damping ratio is one. And that type of motion is called critically damped. And in the next video, we'll go through the mathematical derivations of the three types of motion, and we'll see how the object or the oscillator moves for each particular case.